how to make or how I made these low back stools. Let's get into it. And stay tuned after the episode for a maker update. As I mentioned in my modular breakfast bar edit, I have done a pretty good job of depleting my lumber budget recently. So to kick these off, I started with some pine 2x4s from Lowe's, cutting them down to a little longer than the final 15 and 3 quarter inch width of the seats, then jointing and planing them to get them square. After that, I laminated five of the squared pieces together per seat. making sure to alternate the grain pattern for better stability. Once the glue cured, I tidied up the seams before taking them to the table saw to cut them down to 15 and 3 quarter inches by 15 and 3 quarter inches. Then I measured and marked the center point on each. After that, I measured mirroring distances from the corners on parallel sides and used a straight edge to connect the opposing points to create a kind of spoke wheel that would outline where I would cut the mortises for the stool back spindles. Then I used a compass to outline the rounded back for the stool seat. I also marked the latitudes for where I would sink the leg mortises as well. And circled the back of the seat one more time with the compass to mark three quarters of an inch away from the outer edge to make a limiting guide when it comes time to carve the grooves in the seat. Then using a jig and angle guide, I cut one inch mortises at five degrees into the stool seats for the legs. No longer in need of a straight edge to anchor the mortising jig, I used the bandsaw to cut the rough shape of the final stools. With the seats roughed out, I turned to steam bending the stool backs. I started by cutting more than a few 5mm strips of 3 quarter inch thick pine. Then, using the steam chamber I created in another episode, let those lamination pieces cook for a few hours at around 200 degrees. After their schwitz, I bent the laminate pieces around an MDF form. Using clamps and straps to hold them in place. Letting them cool and dry overnight, the next day, I glued the stack pieces together and reapplied them to the form while the glue cured. Once dry, I used a 6 inch scrap as a guide and marked the edge cuts of the backs. Then trim them down with a crosscut sled. And sanded away any roughness or squeeze out. With the seat and back components in good shape, I could turn to cutting the mirroring mortises for the back spindles. I aligned the back and used the spoke shape to guide my marks. Then with a half inch Forstner bit, I cut the mortises in both the seats and the backs.
Before turning to the legs, pun a little bit intended, I gave the bottoms of the seats a finishing level sand down. Now, time for the legs. I started by laminating two 22 inch square pieces to create the turning blanks. Then, with the table saw, cut them down to one and a half by one and a half inch blanks. After that, I found center for each side of each blank. Then, it was time to turn. I started by rounding over the sharp edges near the top of the leg. Then, marked one and a half inches down from the top and cut away a one inch tenon from the shoulder up. After that, I turned a simple, slightly tapered leg. With the legs turned, I cut a crosshatch through each tenon to allow room for a spline. Then, seven and a half inches from the shoulder of the leg, I cut a half inch mortise that would house the stretcher, adding rigidity to the base. After cutting the half inch dowels down to size, I used a half inch rounded nose bit and the trim router to cut a recess for the cross stretcher. Then, used a high grid sandpaper to add a little chamfer to each end of the cross stretcher for a more tidy finished product. Time for assembly. With the legs in place, I cut away the excess tenon and spine and used the angle grinder to carve the curvature for the seat. Then I glued the cross stretchers in place. With cured glue, I added a quarter inch oak pin to each connection point to secure them into place. With the base joint structurally done, I got to work cutting the legs so the stool would sit level. Then, gave a finishing level sand down and rounded over the edges. Including the back's edges, before assembling the backs to the stools.
I again used quarter inch oak pins to secure the joints. Then it was time for a quick whitewash to soften the yellow of the pine. And finally, finishing with a high gloss finish to seal the chairs. And that's a wrap. few years, making and posting these projects for you guys has quickly become a passion of mine. Though I haven't stayed in one place very long, or even one time zone, this constant has helped ground me and keep me focused on work worth doing. I love the craft, I love the community, and I'd love to keep growing and sharing with you. In order to do that, I'm asking for your support via the Patreon link in the description below. My goal is not only to use your generosity to keep this channel growing, but to make the Honest Work Patreon page a place to find extra behind the scenes content as well as foster a community of craftspeople, lovers of woodcraft, and makers of all kinds. And to give you the clubhouse only opportunity to tell me what you'd like to see more of as this channel evolves. Through our exchanges, video after video, I've grown to think of many of you as friends and members of my favorite maker community. And I'm excited to start this next chapter with you. So check out the Patreon link, of course, like and subscribe, and I'll meet you over there for more honest work. Until next time.